Hello, my friends, family, esteemed colleagues. Another request came to talk a little bit more about skin inflammation. Okay, so I have explained that skin is a blood cleansing organ. It is organ that protects us from surrounding and then also it is being used to uh, allow the blood to be cleansed when the blood is very toxic and when is blood going to be that toxic that skin has to be used it is always because it is low on plasma the lower amount of blood that you have you are going to have the same amount of blood particles but you are going to be dropping the level of plasma in it and this makes blood thicker and less plasma you have it means less water will be available for cleansing purposes I have mentioned a million times that in the body we don't store water because water is not electroconductive we we have it in a form of plasma which means it is saturated with minerals ions that body uses as a conductors so if you are low on minerals salts then basically you are going to be dehydrated because body is going to get rid of the water that it cannot properly measure towards the minerals to maintain the best possible electroconductivity in the body so not eating salt is the best way to get sick and die but this is what we are being told no salt just look at vegans first they are poisoning themselves with vegetables and then they are not having salt but they have water so they are flushing minerals out they become pale frail and sick even though they don't want to admit it on top of not being properly nourished so when the blood blood is very low on plasma then the only way it can really cleanse is through organ that loses the least amount of water which is then skin so the toxins from the blood are being directed towards the skin towards the peripheral tissue and there starts the buildup now these toxins then cannot be absorbed by cells cells basically close down so we get kind of dry skin the skin starts dehydrated because it cannot hydrate because there is it's the cells of the skin are bathed in toxicity and uh, of course in a critical situations you know, the soul or the, the, the poisons have to come out but in the area where we sweat because we know that uh, blood liquids in our body plasma blood they are being used also for cooling the body or heating the body depending what has to be done and when it's really warm especially in areas where there is warmer we are going to starts to sweat so which is usually our hair 
underarms, crutch, pepuzzi, and if you have access, uh, excess of fat, then you will have those folds, the fold on the neck underneath your sweat, because skin touching skin. Belly also, flaps underneath, ladies with breast, underneath the breast. Wherever needs to be done more cooling, then more blood and plasma is being directed, bringing more toxicity, extreme parts that get hot. They get cooled by liquid, actually, plasma, coming out of the skin, and the evaporation is being used as a cooling mechanism. So you are having this plasma with toxic stuff coming out. It doesn't come out through urine because kidney uses way too much water. So it's all being directed as plasma levels in the blood, as blood levels are dropping, then cleansing is being slowly directed from kidneys into mucosal tissue. We start suffering more from digestive issues, nausea, diarrhea, especially in the morning. This means that during the night some toxic elements have been cleansed from blood and th through mucus deposited in the stomach and intestines. Depending on the level of toxicity, we get nausea or diarrhea because it inflames the tissue. Stomach aches, even ulcer could be part of this. But as we go back to the skin, In the area where you have more heat, more motion is being drawn for cooling, bringing, with, bringing toxicity because your blood and plasma is toxic. So it's coming out, so you have more toxicity affecting certain areas, could be neck. And you can actually see difference on the skin, it gets darker. I have my African friends asking me, look, Darko, oh, we are higher pigmented, but why is our skin getting, skin getting even darker in places, not everywhere, but in places darker and rougher, bumpier, and growths, growths? Well, because of the toxicity. The toxic material is going there, it's coming out, toxins, number one, smell bad, and they darken the skin because it's a, it's a garbage. Just look at people that are on dialysis, blood dialysis, because the kidneys do, do not work anymore. Look at their skin, it's getting darker and darker and darker because all the dirt, all the garbage, all the toxicity is being pushed towards it to be eliminated, but again, without enough plasma in the body, it's tough to do. But before we even go in such a deep set problem, lack of plasma in the body is going to basically force the garbage to be pushed towards the skin, because it does cleansing with minimal loss of water, according to the other two organs. The worse are kidneys, then less you, you waste less water with mucus. And then through the skin, well, sweat, you don't, sometimes you don't sweat in the whole body, but you can. But still, you lose less water than urinating or having diarrhea. And a lot of garbage can come out. But what is the worst thing? That all the blood garbage is being now drawn towards skin because it cannot cleanse any other way. 
and uh, because diarrhea stops, we go into constipation because we are so dehydrated that even diarrhea cannot work anymore. So the rest of the blood that you have, the rest of the lympha that you have, the only available outlet is then the skin. And all the toxicity is being drawn to it. Most of it does not get expelled out because it's simply there is not enough water. And you sweat very often when you, have, when you are low on water, you will sweat partially, not in the whole body, but as I have mentioned, in a warmer area only. Because again, body is trying to hold on to the plasma, hold on to the water. It does not want to waste it because it does not have enough. And this is all caused because we do not eat salt and we do not drink enough water. But drinking water without having salt does not help you at all. Well, it helps you sweat a little faster, but then again, you may urinate and sweat, but you urinate clear. You sweat with minimal amount of detox. Why? Because your body becomes desperate for to achieve the proper conductivity. It's very low on minerals. So you pop in water without minerals. Now this bad conductivity is way worse than being dehydrated so psh, body goes and shoots the water out it does not have even time to pick up the garbage because it's not focusing on cleansing it's focusing to adjust the electroconductivity very often often we don't notice these things because it is settling underneath skin everywhere but only a few places you may have rash. And that's because, you know, maybe you are studying and you are having your hand like this or like this. You are creating heat and all of a sudden you are going to start having a bad skin in the area. Because again, heat draw more liquid to cool down the area. Liquid is toxic. Not all the toxic comes out. And usually settles right on the skin or underneath the skin and water evaporates. So the area becomes damaged on a cellular level, very toxic. So how do our cells respond when they are very dry, acidic, and they have a problem on the outside because there are tox toxins which they would need to flush away. Well, they need desperately the water. So the emergency hydration kicks in and the area inflames. With increased pressure, the body is designed to push some of the water passively into the cell, then the cells can then later use to rinse the dirt. Of course, when we start having the inflammations that we call rashes, we run to dermatologist, expert on skin, doctor for skin problems. And what does dermatologist do? put steroid on it, put poison on it to prevent further cleansing, locking in the dirt. Okay, so the skin calms down because you su suppress the inflammatory process. And you go, wow, doctor is fabulous. Look, this cream works. Well, all the dirt is there. As soon as there is no cream, pew, it's gonna go out. And every time it will be worse and worse and worse until you come into psoriasis and then you ask your dermatologist wow why do i have psoriasis 
And the dermatologist will say, well, how is it in your family? Anybody in your grandfather, no? Maybe his grandfather, no? Maybe, maybe, two. As soon as you find someone that has some skin rash and maybe psoriasis, that's it, genetic, you see? Bull. It's all happening in real time in your body from toxicity. You are very toxic, very dehydrated, and you are forcing all the cleanse to go through your skin. So, many people when they start protocol, especially if they have been vegans, all of a sudden their skin starts getting inflamed everywhere. The whole body could be inflamed. But women, usually mostly face, could be also the body. Why the face? Because of makeup. Makeup is toxic. And skin is not uh, impermeable. As you sweat through it, so you absorb, absorb through it. And you will absorb whatever you put on the skin. This is why be careful what you put on skin. There are certain things, certain oils based on crude oil that will not be absorbed. They actually close the pores. So they are being used in cosmetic industry. They call them fancy name, mineral oil. Why? Because when you put something based on mineral oil, it stays there. It doesn't get soaked in. So it makes the skin smooth, nice looking. But at the same time, it prevents skin from respirating. So what happens? The pores start getting larger and larger and larger. And by the time you notice it, you'll have awful skin. When we have low level of plasma, low level of blood, inadvertently, there is toxicity accumulating in subcutaneous tissue. In many, it causes loss of hair. When you start losing hair in the center here, this is toxic blood. But, especially younger people, they do not, do not have yet symptom of disease per se. They don't connect the little things that happen to being toxic or to be a problem. Oh, it's a little thing. It, it's going to pass. But the toxicity is accumulating in the peripheral tissue. Now, when you start drinking more plasma, if you go on a protocol, or you go to the sea, seashore, and you swim in the a, in a seawater, well, you start hydrating, you are increasing blood level, and now it is poking into all these areas which were kind of dehydrated and getting now all the garbage from this tissue and pushing it out at the same time as it is trying to di dissolve it and or orient it now towards the mucosal tissue because there is getting more and more plasma so it could be eliminated that way too but if you are hydrating slowly or if you are at the sea and just briefly in the seawater uh, you don't absorb enough so you absorb just enough to kind of help get some of the toxicity out of the skin. And you expose your skin to the light, to, to UVs, and the whole thing explodes. And you have these big bubbles. Well, what are these bubbles? 
this is a toxic plasma from the toxic stuff that was underneath your skin. Once when you cleanse, this doesn't happen. I remember as young, even young kid, I had these big things like, like a sheets my mother could peel off my body. Now when I sunburn, which is very seldom because I get red, but skin doesn't react. It even gets a little painful on touch, but no big deal because I'm well hydrated. So there's plenty of water to do inner cooling and processing and no problems. And if I'm really like, I most of the time I'm indoors behind the computer, but when I find a minute and I go to the river, if I'm on the sun for a couple hours, I get burned. And painful to touch, maybe in the next day. Not nearly as it used to be, but no pleaks. And if I have really damaged the skin, then it will start later on like a dandruff, like little, little scales, like a just rinse it off, and that's it. Because there was not accumulated toxic garbage underneath the skin in subcutaneous tissue. But when, you know, it happens to quite a few people that they start drinking plasma and all of a sudden they feel puffy. Well, that's it. And then they go, wow, I drank salt. Salt is, oh, oh I'm getting um, edema. I'm getting, you know, water retention. I should not drink more. So you don't increase. So now you are not having enough plasma to activate detox through your colon, through your mucosal tissue. So you are forcing now for detox to continue to go through the skin, making the skin worse. So once when it happens, if you go to the protocol and you start doing the protocol correctly, well, number one, it's always good to be guided if you have chronic issues. And if you don't want to and something happens, then don't wait and don't try to make your, um, I don't know, scientific discoveries and explain the thing using the knowledge that you have acquired in a school. Because it's a garbage knowledge, it's not knowledge, it's misleading. Okay, the salt is not causing any water retention. It is basically now working with this toxicity that you have and once when you start loading with plasma, try to load as much and as fast as possible so this way you engage all three organs in cleansing process. So as soon as you raise the blood level to satisfactory level that your cleansing organs kidneys and mucosal tissue do not have to um, save water. Then you start cleansing through urine and through mucosal tissue which relieves the pressure from the skin and you start redirecting the toxins down to the other organs because they do much faster cleanse. And your skin starts getting better. Skin inflammation or inflammation of any kind is always a sign of very dehydrated tissue which is being inflamed because through the inflammation it is increasing the internal pressure of plasma liquid to be pushed, squeezed passively into the cell that is dehydrated so the cell can do the cleansing of itself or yeah from the outside outskirts or inside you should never try to stop inflammation unless it is creating a dangerous problem like inflammation of a throat for example and now you cannot breathe inflammation of lungs you cannot breathe inflammation of brain whoops that's a different situation. 
stop it or not, now we can discuss that separately. But skin, you don't want to slow down the detox. If you start getting inflamed, lower on plasma as much as you can go to sauna open up heat red sauna let the stuff out as fast as you can and you will calm down but you have to hydrate the cells on cellular level uh, the skin which means that you will have to cleanse the blood so your cells accept it and they start hydrating actively through their engaging their osmotic pumps. Now to do that, again, keep in mind that anything toxic in a food that you don't even know it's toxic, like caffeine or alcohol, nicotine, ginger, turmeric, black pepper, a bunch of spices we use, they are toxic to our cells and they refuse to hydrate if they are present in the blood. They will aromatic phenols which our cells do not like. So even if your blood is clean, you are not going to have any improvements on the skin. And this is also why I recommend Bex. Uh, this is one of them. Bex machine that it's a blood electrifier and as soon as you put it on it raises the voltage it stimulates cellular hydration your cells immediately go into hydration and mostly the cells which are supplied with the red blood lymphatic system mm, not so much because what pulsar does, it turns the iron of red blood cells into magnets. So as the red blood cells, like a mini magnets, shoot through your body, with induction, they are actually stimulating electrically the cells where they pass and causing them to kick into hydration, kick the osmotic pump. They start producing potassium and increased concentration of potassium makes the internal liquid within the cell thicker and the absorption of less dense liquid through semi-permeable membrane of the cell starts which is called the osmotic action the cellular osmotic pump and this is what I call the active hydration of cells so when you have any kind of a skin problem the last thing you should do is go to dermatologists because they know the least what i'm sorry colleagues but if your knowledge is coming from the books we all are forced to read when we study medicine then you absolutely do not understand the body and putting topical stuff those are patches which actually increase the problem because you are now suppressing even this outlet so the toxicity continues intensifying and they seep into brain and then you have neurological problems so we have to allow the help the body not suppress it we have to help it and everything we are doing medicinally is suppression our body does not need any medicine it needs plasma and it needs us to stop poisoning it giving it correct food no matter what problem on the skin you have even if you have the little growths this is all because of toxicity. Detoxify the blood, hydrate, it all clears up. I hope I answered the question. Sometimes, especially in vegans, because it's a 
long-term slow poisoning. So there's a lot of poison in subcutaneous tissue and within the cells. And the process can be painfully long. But it starts clearing up, you know, and, and you start feeling better and better and better. But you are going to be most likely inflamed and rashes shoot out, they get worse first because they are pushing the stuff out when you start drinking plasma. But this is why you have to quickly, as quick as possible, increase the level of blood, drinking a lot of plasma, four or five liters, six liters a day, until you break diarrhea. When you break diarrhea, it means your body is not having, having to save plasma anymore. And after that, you can drop one liter less and see what happens. But you should maintain the diarrhea in the morning, at least in the morning. Because this is your gauge that tells you there's enough water, enough plasma in the body. If you don't have morning diarrhea after you have drank one liter of plasma, you don't have enough plasma. Or you are that clean that no toxicity of any significance is coming out through mucosal tissue. Your kidneys can cope with, cope with it. So you can decrease further amount of plasma you are drinking, but the stool has to be pasty. As soon as it hardens up, burp, the other way. Forget about dietitians, nutritionists. They know also deadly squat. Uh, you don't need plants, you don't need fiber, plant fiber to have proper stool. You need enough plasma so the body does not have to reabsorb every, every drop of the plasma from your colon to return it into circulation which makes your stool dry, compact and hard and brings constipation. It's all about plasma. Okay, I hope this explained a little bit things. If something has, has to be more clarified, let me know. Thank you. Till next time. Love you all. Namaste.